Now we're going to start dealing with the art of the Americas. And the Americas are a massive, broad expanse, unlike many of the other areas that we look at. For example, Asia, Oceania, etc. What you have is this broad climactic area where the landmass is primarily latitudinal. In other words, it goes from north to south. So you do see trade from north to south, but things like crops cannot easily be moved from north to south because you run into different climactic areas. This means that we're going to have a very diverse collection of different societies throughout the Americas. Now, where are we? We're basically dealing with North America, Central America, and South America as our primary uh, areas of interest. And we're not going to deal with all of it. Of course, that would be immense. We're going to be picking and choosing throughout these societies. In terms of origins, before I get into origins, I want to remind you of something, that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. In other words, just because we haven't found it yet doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So, anywhere currently, we believe, from 50,000 to 10,000 BCE, we start to see people coming into the Americas. And this is based on artifacts. The problem is we're constantly finding new artifacts, so that date could well change. We could well be looking at something 100,000 in the range of 100,000 BCE or 75,000 BCE, and we simply haven't found the artifact that proves it yet. Now, we see a couple of different places that we believe people came into the Americas. The most common one is, of course, the land bridge from Asia, but we also believe that uh, people from Europe were following in boats, following along the edge of the glacier to North America, or possibly even walking, but more than likely in boats. The reason is this would be fertile hunting ground at the time where the sea meets the glacier. You would have things like seals, you would have congregations of fish and other things, and it would attract them across the ocean, obviously slowly and possibly over as long as a generation or more. We also have the possibility of boats coming from the Pacific and crossing into the Americas. We're simply not that sure where we're seeing colonization from. In fact, genetically, as of yet, we have no conclusive evidence pointing towards a specific land bridge. It is quite possible that we have multiple waves coming in from different directions. Now, by the 15th century, by the time the Europeans arrive, as many as 50 to 90 million inhabitants are in place in the Americas. Their estimates as high as 200 million, although probably somewhere between 100 and 150 million uh, seems to be the current consensus. Between 8,000 and 2,000 BCE, they began to settle and became agricultural. As we will see, the level of civilization and technology will vary widely. We also tend to think of domestication and agriculture as involving the domestication of animals. But of course, in the Americas, we don't see domesticated animals outside of the Andes. They will domesticate corn from grass, but we'll get to that later. We will see wheels, but only on toys. And interestingly, these toys are only ever found in graves. So it's possible that this was something sacred to the gods, something that was tied to grave goods. Another thing to keep in mind is generalization in the Americas is like generalizing China or Europe. We end up with bad comparisons. We end up with all sorts of issues. There's an incredible diversity here prior to the Europeans coming in, at which point they kind of uh, alter things. We'll see that element of hybridization. So you can't look at the art of the Americas and make broad generalizations. It just doesn't work. We also see a rapid decline at the end of the 15th century, primarily due to disease. This is part of the reason why the pilgrims, for example, will encounter very few natives, because 90% of the native population had died by the time they actually get here. 
So by the time we see most of the settlers coming in, even Jamestown in about 1609, uh, many of these early groups, early Europeans are not running into Native Americans because, well, they've died. They've died of smallpox. They've died of any number of other diseases that the Europeans have brought over, keeping in mind that there were people before Columbus coming to the Americas regularly. And two groups that come to mind are the fishermen of Bristol and the fishermen of the Basque region of Spain, who were probably using Newfoundland, Massachusetts, and that Northeast Corridor as a place in the summer to stop and dry their fish so that they could bring salt cod back to Europe. And most of this cultural decline is going to be due to missionary work and westernization. I will refer to westernization at times as hybridization, how two cultures come together because it's never really equal. And hybridization is kind of a more general term and one that's being used more and more academically. 